Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to drive an LED from a low power source, uh, like a data pin or something like that from, say, an FPGA, which is what we're going to use today, or a microcontroller. Anything that's low power um, that you can get at least enough of a, a signal out to turn on, say, the base of a BJT. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So if you watched my previous video, which is linked down below, we ended with uh, an actual LED blinky program from the Ultra 96 FPGA um, from the fabric on that one. And what we needed to do was to hook this up to an LED. Uh, now the, the power coming out of that thing, the voltage is like 1.8 and you really don't want to draw a whole lot of current from something like that. So I figured it'd be good to use a BJT to, to light this thing up. Now we're going to use a very simple circuit here. Um, there's many ways to light up an LED with a BJT or even a MOSFET. And in fact, I had originally planned to use a, a 2N7000 MOSFET, but the details going into that were going to be a lot more than I think uh, this video really needs to be. So we're going to do something a little simpler. We're going to do, use a BJT here. And if you look at the circuit, really all we need is the LED, uh, two resistors of different sizes, which we'll figure out and uh, the BJT itself. For this, I'm gonna use a 2N3904 because it was handy. Uh, I think at one point I picked up a bunch of uh, BJTs from Radio Shack, but you should be able to find some uh, BJTs from Fry's or any other uh, electronic store or uh, Mauser. Um, or even probably Amazon. Um, so if you like the videos I've been doing, please please throw a like down there below for the algorithm. Um, subscribe to my videos if you want to keep seeing them. Put that notification bell on if you really want to see what's coming up next. And put a comment down below if you have any questions or uh, if you just want to encourage me or, or our audience uh, to keep going further. So the first thing that we really start out with here, uh, we need to start at the top. We've got an LED, right? So we need to figure out how much current and voltage we're going to need for this branch here. 5 volts is a pretty good rail here to start with. Uh, most things will have 5 volts. So we'll call this 5 volts at the top. Uh, and what we need to know is how much how much voltage is this LED going to take? And when we know that, we can kind of assume a short here. So if we assume a short here when this thing's on, we can take the voltage from the LED and we can subtract that from our voltage up here to get a voltage drop across this resistor. And if we have the voltage drop across this resistor, then we can change the resistor size to match what current we want to come through this LED here. Um, so we'll go ahead and go measure the actual LED to get a voltage off of the thing. Uh, and I'll bring you all to do that right now. So for some reason, I don't have the actual data sheet for this LED that I'm going to be using. So I figured I'd show you guys how to measure that voltage uh, just to be complete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my multimeter here on the lab bench. Uh, let me get that turned on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this LED here and I'm going to connect the pins to the probes and it'll actually light up because it's measuring it. So let me see if I can get this in the shot here. So if you see that there, it shows 1.882 volts. So we'll use that for our voltage that we need to calculate our circuit. Okay, real quick before we move on, I want to look at uh, LEDs. Uh, this is something that you should know if you're going to do this circuit. Um, you need to know what side's positive and what side's negative. So let's go look at this uh, screen over here. I just did a Google search for LED uh, anode and cathode, right? So the anode's going to be the positive side and the cathode's going to be the negative side. Um, the way the manufacturers denote this, they'll put a flat side on one side of the LED and that'll be your negative side. Also, uh, often they'll make one lead longer than the other and that'll be the positive side. If you do get confused, uh, you can come back to this video or just search Google for LED anode cathode, anode and cathode, LED cathode. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there real quick. Let's get back over here to our slideshow. Okay, so now we know that uh, we've got 1.88 volts that's gonna go across this LED. What we need to do is subtract that from our upper rail, which is gonna be five volts. So we get five volts minus 1.88 equals 3.12. Now we know that that 3.12 is what's going to be left across this resistor here, uh, assuming that this is a short when it's turned on. So now that we know that, we can use Ohm's law, which is V equals IR, and we just rearrange it and we say that R equals V over I. Doing that and making that calculation, we come up with 156 ohms. Now we're going to be hard pressed to find a 156 ohm resistor. Uh, we could do like 150 and stack 6 1 ohms or something like that, or a 6 ohm. But uh, this doesn't have to be perfect, and we can run a little bit more or a little bit less than the two, 20 milliamps. So here in a second, we'll go find a resistor for this uh, when we do kind of the build of this thing. 
uh, and we'll just make sure that it's the right resistor that's close to it, right? So now we know uh, how to bias the top of the circuit. Now we need to know how to bias this uh, resistor down here. The idea here is to keep from having to draw too much current through the base from the low power source, right? I mean, the whole idea here is to not use a bunch of current or to use a, a very minimal amount of power to drive this thing, um, which is why I kind of started out with the idea of using a MOSFET. Uh, but as I said, the calculations were, were a lot more and the actual data sheet values didn't match for a 1.8 volt. Um, with MOSFETs, you know, 5 volts is a good turn on level. Um, I, I could find some, but I don't have them on hand uh, that would work great for this. I made one that works, but there's a calculation that has to go into the resistance or the, the power drop across the actual MOSFET in that case. So what we'll do here is use this BJT, and we need to figure out how to calculate this uh, resistor here. Now, there's a way to go in and do this properly um, for biasing transistors, and it's not so bad, but it's it's really lengthy for this video. Uh, you know, it basically, you take the voltage drop across here, and you can figure out uh, how much voltage is going to go across that. Anyways, we're going to use a simple formula, uh, kind of a, a rule of thumb sort of thing to figure this out, since really, I, I'm guessing all you guys really want to do here is uh, light up an LED. So I've got this formula here um, that I just pulled offline. It's just a little rule of thumb formula. And what we'll do here, we just want to look at these these values. So we've got RB is our resistor here. RL is this guy here and HFE, um, which we haven't figured out yet. To do so, we're going to go to the data sheet. Uh, so let's go find the data sheet. And basically how I found this was just to search for uh, the 2N3904 data sheet. Uh, then I went through here and I just did a, a quick search. In fact, if I was at the start, you know, just type in HFE, um, click enter. It takes me to these these uh, small signal characteristics here. Uh, there's a graph. And then I've got kind of like an on characteristic. And that's what I'm really interested in here is the on characteristic. A uh, small signal is good to know because we are driving a, a small signal into this, but we're not really doing like uh, amplification of an RF circuit or audio or anything like that. Uh, either way, I think we could you could get there one way or the other. And you can look through and see kind of what H HFE you can get dependent on what kind of amperage you put through the thing. So a current of 0.1 milliamps is going to give you a minimum of 20 HFE, uh, whereas like 100 will give you a minimum of 30. Um, a good HFE is right here in the middle, 100 or so. Uh, so 100 to 300. So we'll just call it 200 at this point, just to kind of give a roundabout. If we look at this HFE here, um, for small signal characteristics, it's somewhere between 100 and 400. 200 will be a good guess. Um, it'll keep us from frying anything, and it'll give us a lower power drop across that transistor so that we can drive the LED the way we'd like to. Um, so that may account for some of this when we get back into it. Um, where we might make this resistor a little bit smaller because we know that there's going to be a little bit of resistance coming from this guy. So once we get those values here, we can plug those into the formula here. Um, you see you've got uh, RL is the 156 and HFE is 200. Um, then we can go down and make that calculation. It's 6240. So we now know that our RB is going to be 6240 ohms. So what we'll wind up doing is making that just a little bit short, give it a little bit more HFE um, and a little bit more current going through. So now that we have all those numbers, let's go ahead and build that circuit and see how it works. All right, so we've got those numbers. Uh, I'll build this circuit out. Uh, I may stop here every once in a while and uh, show you a thing or two, but let's get it built. All right, 150 ohm and a quarter watt at 5% ought to do us just fine. One thing you want to do when you pull these things from those sleeves like that is to go ahead and clean off the ends. Uh, I use a lighter or just my fingers here just to make sure that you're getting good contact with, uh, with the breadboard there. So the closest thing I have here is 5.8K at a quarter watt, 5%. So that should work fine. Let's see how it does. So I've got the circuit all hooked up here. If you look, here's the transistor. Um, the emitter leg has got the green wire going to here. Um, you've got that bias resistor or the 5.8K going from here to the base of the transistor. And then we've got the 150 ohm resistor going from the collector up 
into the diode here and then over to our five volt rail, which I've hooked up from my power supply. Um, so that's all hooked up. What I'll do right now, uh, if you look on the side over here, sorry for the shakiness, there's the Ultra 96 board. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in and then I'm gonna hit the power button on it. And then I'll step over and uh, get the thing programmed up and you can watch the light blink. FPGA is programmed now to run the processor. And there you have it, our light is blinking with the timing we showed before in the previous video for the Ultra 96 Blinky video. So I really hope you liked this video, guys. Uh, please like below if you did. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. Subscribe if you want more content and hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified every single time there's a new video. Have a great day, guys, and don't forget to love well.